Well, the IMF and the World Bank are holding their summit in Washington this week, and currency intervention is likely to be a top issue. China and the United States are at odds over the strength of the yuan, and they're not the only ones out there uh, with pressure on currencies and a lot of debate surrounding that. John Lipsky is joining us now. He's the first deputy managing director of the IMF. He's with us from headquarters there in Washington. Um, you know, sir, it, it sounds like we've stepped straight into the middle of a currency war, if you believe the Brazilian finance minister, if you believe the U.S. Treasury secretary, he characterizes at the very least as a damaging dynamic to see uh, all this pressure being put to weaken currencies right now. How do you characterize the environment we're in? Well, I certainly wouldn't want to disagree with uh, uh, my good friend, the finance minister of Brazil, Guido Mantegna, but uh, hopefully we're not in a war. And I think what uh, Secretary Geithner was talking about was avoiding a destructive dynamic. And that is that we need to maintain a broad-based collaborative effort in setting uh, policies, uh, economic policies, in order to promote a strong, sustainable and balanced recovery. When you're talking about the degree of coordination that's needed, are we in an environment where, like in the 80s, you could actually see currency accords? Well, those currency accords, for instance, the Plaza Accord or the Louvre Accord, uh, were among a very small number of advanced economies and was a one-off kind of operation. What we've replaced it with in the wake of the recent crisis was the agreement at the Pittsburgh summit last September, September 2009, to create a framework for strong, sustainable and balanced growth and a mutual assessment process to objectively collaborate on, form, on policy formation, and that process is ongoing. Currency adjustment is one of the elements, not the only element that is going to promote those goals. And I would say that we wouldn't want to miss the Chinese authorities announced in June before the Toronto summit that they were, going, they were beginning a more flexible uh, uh, currency policy. So the question is not one of principle, should they adjust their policies? Right. We're discussing the appropriate pace and other policies to go along with it, not just in China, but in all the G20 economies. Is it a fear on your part that we will see more gestures towards capital controls, more situations and adaptations like the Brazilians have had to, to try to cool off their currency? Well, this is, uh, in fact, it's only uh, the Brazilian action to increase the uh, inflow charge for capital inflows uh, was only partly aimed at uh, trying to alleviate pressure on currencies, also was concerned, reflected concerns about asset prices, but right. only demonstrates, once again, the need for collaborative policies internationally because Brazil is being affected by policies elsewhere. We have to avoid things like the, the uh, widespread use of capital controls, protectionist measures, currency mm -hmm. intervention. We need a better way. And it, But what is clear is that there is a process that is underway to avoid that. Naturally, you're hearing, uh, in the given the disappointments in some countries about the pace of improvements in their economy, that others should move faster to help. But that's what we're here to talk about and to avoid these uh, negative outcomes that you've uh, hinted at. Well, uh, you know, UBS says this is going to be the, the mega trend for the next 10 years uh, on the currency front. Uh, I, I want to ask you, there is concern when you look at other asset classes that the expectation of a flood of liquidity or the reality of a flood of liquidity could be a dangerous thing. How concerned are you right now about that? Well, if a flood of liquidity is a uh, is, is, uh, requires a definition, but let's, let's say the following. For sure, we think it's appropriate in advanced economies where the economic growth is barely reached trend rates, where uh, unused capacity is high and where inflation is in fact decelerating, not accelerating, that accommodative monetary policy is appropriate. We also know from a medium term perspective that many dynamic emerging market economies possess stronger growth, possess falling uh, government deficits and debt, falling inflation and uh, very favorable rates of return. It's a positive thing that these economies are doing well and attracting capital that's 
going to help them continue to grow. It's an issue of making sure that this occurs in a uh, in a in a context that is uh, that is helpful and not destructive. And that's what the collaboration is all about. Well, uh, your meeting, sir, is very highly anticipated, and we are will be watching and listening in for for what does happen on that collaborative process you're talking about. Uh, thanks for making time.